Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and in today's project we are making mini waffa birds. Wild and free fiber art birds. They're so small you might even call them wafitas. These little birds can brighten up any space, whether you choose to sit them on a shelf, use them as little messengers of goodwill, hang them in a window or from your rear view mirror. You might even like to use a little waffa bird as a plant stake. In today's project, we will go over how to form the armature for making these little birds, how to make sure they stand, giving them perfect toes, wrapping them in wool, treating them with your favorite colors for whatever mood you're feeling, and we'll also look at a variety of embellishments for different styles of wings, potentially giving them some tails and a beak. If you like, you can also give your waffa birds little glass eyes. All of that we'll cover in today's project. Supplies for this project are super easy for fiber. We're using core wool, probably a quarter of an ounce for each little bird. And then on top, any batting you like. I prefer batting for this project. You could use MC1, Maori, or Bergschaft. And if instead you have New Zealand Corydale or something like that, give it a go as well. I'll be using Bergschaft Kiwi. The basic tools for this project are really pretty simple and things you might already have around. I'll be using two different types of glue, tacky glue for stiffening things actually, and then I like the silicone glue for a permanent adhesion. You might also want a fray check for a no sew wing and we'll cover that. A little bit of quilt batting is great and if you don't have that, then you might just use felt or double layers of fabric. Felting needles, I'll be using coarse, medium, and fine. A needle felting pad, this is my wow pad 12 by 12. Floral tape. Armature wire, for today I'll be using our 20 gauge bare silver wire and our 20 gauge covered wire. If all you have is our brown 18 gauge wire, that works fine. We'll also be using our 24 gauge stainless steel wire. Some pliers and wire cutters. If you have only one tool, this is the one. Maybe tweezers, a straight awl, and I'm gonna be putting glass eyes in my little guy as well. We will be looking at a variety of wing types, so grab any pre-made felt, maybe paper, scrap fabrics. I've also brought in our sari ball yarn ribbon and some embroidery floss, maybe some buttons, needle and thread. If you'd like a little helper for today's project, you can download the PDF with these diagrams below. Our underbird is going to look like this. Very easy to make. To form the armature for each bird, we'll use one of the cloth covered 20 gauge wire, 16 inches, and one of the bare wire at 18 inches, and we'll use this as well. For a measuring device, I find a quilter square really helpful. This one's nine and a half inches. We're going to begin by cutting off four inches of our wire. Bend your wire in half and form a tight peak at the top. I like to hold it with my wire cutters and open this up to a nice V so my hands will hold that space as I twist. The main body of the bird will be about four inches long and then you fold the rest back in onto the body. If you fold in these sharp ends and twist them around, it keeps them from poking out the end of the fiber. And of course, you could cut more off if you want as well. The diagram can help you decide what shape you want your bird body to be. Do you like the little blobby bird? Do you like the tail up or do you like the tail down? You'll take your armature and shape it basically from the beak to the tail. It doesn't need to be precise. All the rest will be filled in with fiber. To make a standing bird, which we're going to make today, you're going to take your bare 20 gauge wire and cut it in half. Each of these halves will be one leg and the major toe. Place the wire approximately in the bend of the bird's body leave a few inches to wrap around the body. Give it a nice bend, and then we're gonna to wanna to really crimp it down onto the body with your pliers. 
wrap around the body. If your ultimate goal is for your bird to be a plant stake, you can stop right here with the single wire. Repeat the exact same with the second leg. The placement for the legs really is going to be approximately two thirds of the body is going to be towards the head and a little more like a third towards the back. You might need to play with balance the first few times you make them, but try this as a starting point. And then make sure the legs are wrapped from opposite sides of the body. So one is wrapped this way and this one is wrapped that way. And then you'll end up with this. Each of these leg wires I'm going to cut to three and a half inches. Put the end of the leg wire underneath your quilt square a half to three quarters of an inch. This is going to form the toe. Once you've bent your leg wires, your little waffa bird should stand. If he doesn't, you know, if he tips forward, then you have too much of the weight on that side. If he tips backward, you have too much of the weight on that side. So just, if it doesn't work, then just try again and it will help if the legs are coming off the swoop of the body. So your bird should be balanced before adding any more toes. That's the trick to this guy. Wrapping with floral tape is optional. I like to cover these bare wires so that they poke me less. It also is gonna give a little surface for the fiber to grab onto. And of course it will turn the legs brown, but for me, I don't mind that at all. I think it adds a cute little character. If you're having difficulty getting it to stick, just pull and stretch it while you wrap. Of course, this will make the legs partially brown and I kind of like that. Toes are of course an option. Um, you could leave your bird just like this. If you're mounting it in wood or some other surface, you can also um, skip the toes altogether or you could glue this under something. So it's completely optional. And if this toe is too long, you can always trim it back, but you might like to get your other toes in place first. For each foot, you'll cut three nine inch lengths of the 24 gauge wire. For each toe, we first anchor a few inches of the wire to the torso. And then we are going to just wrap it down the leg. So spread your other leg out of the way and then just wrap tightly. And you can make the rear toe first or, or any toe that you like. Bring your wire straight back and then just fold it in half where you think it should be and then twist. The twist is gonna give the strength. And then come back around the ankle and back up the leg, and that's going to secure it. Yep. We're going to repeat the same for the other two toes. So already for this bird, I'm feeling like the, the center toe is a little long, but again, you can leave it until you have the other toes in place. For this toe, I like to come from this side, so come all the way from the opposite side. With this extra wire that you have after wrapping the toe, then just come back you know, tightly around that ankle and that'll make it, keep it from being loosey-goosey. So crimp it to the ankle if you can and then wrap it tightly back up the leg. You can see why the floral tape is, you know, is going to hide, hide all of the inner workings of this foot once it's in place. And I'll repeat with the last toe. Whenever you're wrapping something tiny like this, rather than start at the end where this could come loose, start right here at the ankle and then that way you can anchor it in that place. Once you finish wrapping the toes, then just work your way back up the leg. Always just overlap any, any torn ends. And remember to pull tightly. Repeat with the other leg. Bird should stand at this point, and it's a great time to position the head and the tail and the legs in the place that you want them. 
With our armature in place, it's time to cover our little bird with core wool. The key here is to use thin little strips that you can easily control so that you can create a very tight understructure. The tighter you wrap, the less you'll have to needle felt. Anchor the fiber a little bit lower on the neck so that you can wrap back over it and work your way towards the beak. Wrap very tightly. Once you reach the beak, wrap back down towards the body. You might find it's easier to twist the bird than to flip the wool that gives you more control. Hold that tension very tightly until you get to the end of a strip and then it's time to use your coarse felting needles to anchor that fiber down. Needle felt at an angle so you don't hit your wire. Once your first layer is anchored into place, repeat to build up the body and you're going to want to pay special attention to building up the torso and keeping the tail and the beak relatively pointed. To make the build up of the bird a little more bird-like, start your next wraps to focus on the chest and the belly of the bird. And then go back and wrap the head and the tail with less fiber. Once you've added a second layer to your bird, it will look about like this, a little bit thicker all the way around, but we want to give him some tummy. And the way to do that is to build it up in a little pooch or a little pocket right there. So start with a tuft of wool like this, and then you're going to make a little pooch just like that. And roll it, you know, nice and dense, and then put it right on your bird. And we're just going to needle felt it right into place just like that. And whenever you're adding these little pouches and, and parts, all of any of these little divisions, you just patch in the same way. So just a little layer or a stack will often just fill in a little crevice very nicely and just smooth everything out. That is the magic of batting. So this is the difference between having a little underbird and building up a little bigger chest and a more pronounced um, beak and tail. So just keep needle felting until it's nice and firm and the shape that you like. The next step is to cover your bird with its outer feather fiber color. And for this, we're using Berkshaf in Kiwi Green. For this next step, I'm going to be working in thin long strips and I'll be working with my finer felting needles and sometimes the medium felting needles as well because this wool is a little more coarse and wiry. We'll always want to start our wraps and anchor it down to the bird first. If the legs aren't going to be covered with yarn or any other fabric wraps, it can provide a nice transition just to give them a little wrap. Honestly, sometimes I skip it, but giving them just a little bit of fiber and tacking it into place will provide a nice transition. Now 
Now that our Waffa bird is the color that we want, it's time to give him some flair with his wings, tail, and eyes. Here's a look at a few different wing styles that you might consider for your Waffas or your Wafita birds. This wing is needle felted wool batting. You can needle felt just the shape or you can even needle felt it over pre-felt or wool felt depending on how durable you want it to be. So just follow the shape of your wing. This wing is made from wet felt fabric. You might recognize it. We've used it a number of times and I cut out a specific shape from our greeting cards patterns. But you might also cut out a very simple wing and include some textural elements from your little artful felt fabric or whatever you've wet felted. This wing is actually also needle felted and we needle felted some fuzzy yarn, which I used in uh, one of our vessels from the friendship vessel onto pre-felt. So I cut the pre-felt out of the shape first and then I just needle felted the yarn on and you can needle felt that or glue it right to your bird. This wing is a sewn, it's a top stitch with a fringy edge. We'll show you how to do that. This is a complete no-sew wing and we've used quilt batting. You could also use felt and adhered silk fabric from our Sari Party uh, fabric samplers. This is just a paper wing from paper we included in our April box. So it's a handmade paper with some music notes printed onto it. That could be fun. This is more of a traditional um, sewn and turned wing. We'll be looking at that in a moment. So this is from Quilters Fabric. This is an upcycled fabric actually from a vintage cotton sari and two pieces have been sewn together and top stitched. And this is probably the most fussy of the bunch and it is a sari ribbon from our sari balls that have been stitched to quilt batting and then cut to form this frilly fluffy wing shape. One consideration when you're choosing your wing style is the final position that they'll be on the bird and what will show from the opposite side. So this wing is made with an orange background and it kind of matches the bird. So you can have the wing showing off the bird a little bit and it doesn't look like you're seeing the under parts. It looks just fine. With a wing like this one, you probably don't want that batting sticking up off of your bird to show. Um, so you probably don't want it sticking off. So a wing like this, we will fully adhere to the bird. A double-sided wing like this would be okay if it's sticking up because it will look cute from either side. So when you're choosing your wing style, you might think of the final placement and position. In the PDF, we're giving you a few different wing sizes to consider. In one thought is just smaller bird, medium bird, larger bird, but there are a few different ways we can use these and we'll show that to you as we go through these few different wing styles. Either way, you might wanna pay attention to how the wing is shaped. With the wing this way, you can see that this is downward sloping and then this is a little more rounded. If you flip it this way, it's got a slightly different shape and when you tilt the wing, it's going to look differently than if it's this way. So just decide how you want those wings and whenever you make a wing, whatever method you choose, make sure that you make one for the right side of the bird and the left side of the bird, so they're opposites. Some of the easiest wings to make are needle felt wings. If you're comfortable with needle felting, needle felting your wing, even if you needle felt yarn or something, you know, fancy fuzzy to your felt, that might be the easiest way to go. But even quicker than that would be a paper wing. We just cut these, I tore these paper wings out um, by scoring around the shape. So I put this on the paper and score around the shape and then like with a blunt um, needle or your scissors even and then tear to get the nice tear and then we just treated the edges. If you're looking for fast wings, this will be it. A great no-sew wing is this sort of glued fringy wing. So cut your batting, uh, your quilt batting or felt sheet out and then I fused the fabric to the batting using the 
heat and bond fusible web. You just want to do two things here. So you cut the batting out of one size and then you're gonna cut your fabric slightly larger and fuse the batting to the fabric. If you need tips on doing that, check out the video linked in the info card above. Once it's dried and cooled, then you can just go around the edge of a fabric with a straight pin and just flick out the weave so that it gets loose and fringy. And this is a pretty quick way to make some interesting one-of-a-kind wings. What I do after I get all that done and you got some long bits sticking out, well then you just go around and trim all of those to the same length. With a wing like this, we're just gonna glue it onto the body of the bird. Gluing a wing is an option, but it does come with its own challenges. In this case, we're going to glue this wing onto our little bluebird, and we don't want to glue the fringe down per se because the glue would show through those bare threads. So just take your time and apply the glue to the batting. Don't go all the way to the edge, so you give yourself some room for the glue to smush out when you apply the pressure. And then once you have it seated where you want it, you can go around and add extra glue along the perimeter as you need. This glue I have is fast drying and we just have to work our way from one end to the other to allow any gaps in the fabric to work themselves out. A really easy sewn wing is this top stitched fringy wing. So you want two sides of your fabric and in this case you're going to have your fabric with the right sides out so i'm just going to pin the batting to the fabric so i can see how to trim the fabric you want to trim the fabric just slightly larger maybe an eighth larger than the batting once it's cut out then you're going to put your batting inside the two pieces of fabric so it becomes a little sandwich it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to fringe it after it's sewn, but do try and get it lined up and then pin it back together. And then you'll take this to your sewing machine or you will hand stitch just on the outside of where the batting is. So try, just try and go right along the outside of the batting and then you'll come back with your pin once you're done and fringe the edges just like we did in the other. You'll just flick it so that it's slightly fringed and just a little scrappy looking and it will make a really cute wing. This fabric here is from Vintage Cotton Saris, which I have a collection of, and it's really so paper thin that it's a little challenging to work with. I just backed it with a lightweight fusible web to give it a little more integrity. And then I sandwiched two sides together to form the bases of this wing. I didn't put any batting inside. I traced around the outside of the wing pattern so that I could see the basic shape. And then I just did a running stitch around the outside of the wing. One thing that gives it a little more integrity and a little more strength is just to do running stitches up and down the length of the wing. I found it kind of easy to start in the middle and then go back and work either side but a running stitch is really this simple. You can just run you know, the length or half the length of your needle and then pull it all the way through. And don't worry about it being even or uniform or even going in the perfect straight direction. This is going to add a lot of character and interest in the surface design just to add these very simple stitches. So then once you have your wing fully um, covered like you want, then just trim around the outside of that outline stitch that you started with originally. And that can then be applied to your bird. If you enjoy that hand stitching, you might like to try a wing like this. So this wing started out plain and we hand stitched the perimeter trim just doing a straight running stitch, just like we demonstrated on the prior wing. And then 
all of these interior stitches actually connect the wing to the bird and they're pretty random you can see but the key is to use a little uh, upholstery needle because this will allow you to go into the wing and into the body of the bird and grab hold of that and then come back through. To begin, I would tie a knot in the end of my thread and then start your first stitch, let it anchor somewhere um, under, from underneath the wing and then come back up through the top. So then that thread tail will be hidden and then you can just continue to stitch and anchor the wing to the body as you go. So that's my tip for doing this. Just have fun, let your stitches be random, but try a curved needle and only worry about the interior stitches being the ones that anchor the wing to the bird. This little wing is created by building up layers of fabric. More specifically, I used our sari ribbon because it's already in thin little strips. And then I just chose coordinating colors and patterns that I liked how they went together. Like the other wings we looked at, we start this with a base of quilt batting. You could also use a double layer of fabric or perhaps even felt if you want something a little bit thicker. I did find it was nice to cover it with a base of fabric um, because in these layers, if anything shows, it would be nice that it's at least a color instead of just white material, but that's subjective, totally up to you. This is machine sewn. It could be hand stitched, but it would be quite tedious, I think. And it's really just a process of building up layers of these thin little strips. I cut them all into just long rectangles. We'll place it, the first one at the top of the wing, as close to the top as you can. And then you'll stitch it right to the top of the wing. Once that piece is in place, it gets folded up so essentially this becomes the treatment. And then the next layer is sewn in and as close to that line, you know, where it's joined to the wing as possible. And I do it by opening it up and stitching up the middle, fold it up and add the next piece. And once all the, the pieces are sewn onto the wing, then I trim it out to the wing shape. And that's what you're looking at here. There's a stitch line here to secure it to the top of the wing and the middle fold. So in this case, I fold, I stitched the middle and then to secure it in place and then around it stitched around the top. The bottom half gets folded up and you can see this is the white batting underneath there. So this is, you know, very early me figuring this out. But the next piece of ribbon just gets laid down and just stitched as close as possible. Fold it up and this one has another layer of the pink stitched. It's a little bit easier to see once you get to the next. So these are three pieces of ribbon sewn and folded and then a new piece is added and sewn right down the middle. And it's just a process of building up these little layers and then trimming it to the wing shape. You can see this one's a little short. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I just got uneven, but you can have a few little gaffs and if this was too much of a bare spot for you you can actually go back and add another piece of fabric right in there and just stitch right down the middle on your machine so it creates a roughly fun little wing and then i trimmed them out around and this one i left the fabrics just a little bit longer than the batting in hopes that when I glue it onto the bird as little as possible of the batting will show. But you can also go around like leave this a little bit longer like that. But you can go around and just try and take that batting down so that when you glue it on your bird hopefully as little as possible shows. So this is an example of a little bird that has these ruffly little wings and they're kind of fun and I just glued the entire thing down to the body. Um, if I were to redo it, I might revisit, you know, how long I leave that fabric like I did on this one. I left it a little bit longer so that less of the batting shows through. But we all kind of like this roughly fun effect and I think this would be fun on the, you know, maybe the tail of a bird and it might also be fun to run the ruffles back this way, you know, as a different direction. So you can play with that if you feel adventurous and you don't mind the tedium of sewing all these little tiny strips. For creating a sewn and turned wing, it's important to consider the fabric that you have. 
A fabric like this is, there's a right side and a wrong side. To create a sewn turned wing, you would put the right sides together and then we would stitch around our batting and then turn it inside out. The fabric that we've chosen for this particular wing is a batik and the pattern goes all the way through. So while you might find that one side is slightly brighter, you probably wouldn't get it wrong whichever way you do it. So just consider that. The other thing is the pattern on your fabric. Is there a particular place uh, that you like for a section of the wing? Like would you like more bubbles on the front part of the wing and less bubbles on the back side? If you're doing a printed fabric like this, you might think about what's going to show on your wing and the direction of those wings if you're making two. So as you're choosing your wings, you can choose what you want to show on the outer portion of the wing. So consider the pattern, the direction of the pattern, and for creating a sewn and turned wing, we want right sides together on our fabric. To make this simple sewn and turned wing, we start with size B in our quilt batting. Pin the batting to your fabric, and then you will machine stitch around just the inside of the quilt batting, leaving a small opening to turn. I mark the opening so I remember to leave that opening, and then I like to just cut a couple of notches and trim the quilt batting down as close as possible to make it easier to turn the wing inside out. When you get to the part that's the opening where you want to turn it, because this little area is so small where we're going to be turning the fabric inwards, I find it helpful if you leave just a tiny bit of extra fabric so that you have a little more room to fold and finger press the fabric. Turning your little wing inside out can be a challenge because it's so small, but you just want to poke, run something that's rounded or curved and not too pointed to help push your way around all of the threads and poke out the tip just the best you can. Finger press that little area that you left at the, the turn spot as best you can in, to bring those two edges together to a nice shape. It's very tiny and be patient and if you just can't get it to turn all the way then go back and trim a little more of the batting or cut another notch. For this little burr that we've made together, I've chosen this wing style and pattern. We're also going to use some ribbon from our Sari Ball collection for the beak and the tail, and we're going to give them some blue glass eyes. The beak will be treated with glue as a hardener and needs to dry. So we'll make that first and set it aside and I'm going to use a small cut of armature to help us anchor it in our bird. Just a few inches is really all you need. Cut your wire just to a few inches. It's probably, you know, three, three, four inches long and these little tail parts are gonna stick into the bird. We really want two. We want two little spikes to go into the nose of the bird and then draft your ribbon, just pull it through the very end and, and clamp it down. So just take your ribbon, it's perfect if it's folded over. We want a nice um, pointy beak, helps to spread those out. And then we want it a little bit thicker where it's going to be on the nose of the bird. And I don't mind it being like wrapped and folded over on itself a little bit, but what we want is a conical shape that's thicker at the back than it is at the front. So play with that, fold or twist it as you need to so that the end is pointy and then the back part can be a little bit bulkier. Just hold that tension and all of these loose fibers are going to lay down because we're just gonna put our tacky glue right on there. Now you can just stick this little beak into something and let it dry overnight. So get it all laying down just like you want. Make sure it's a good little conical shape and let it dry. 
Our beak is dry and this is what it looks like. So it's a little bit darker than the original fabric, but it's actually just perfect for our bird. To insert this small beak into the nose of your bird, I found it really helpful to have both of these wires because sometimes when I have only one wire, it just wants to spin or when it's so shallow like this, you're constantly running into the armature. With having two wires, you can sort of go around the armature and then you have a really solid anchor. So use your straight awl to create two small channels. If your wires are too long, you can just cut them. Just the most important thing is make sure you have some distance you can travel into the face of the bird. Once you have it in there and you're happy, you can leave it in place and add the glue for the final adhesion. I like this silicone glue because it dries clear and also it dries very quickly. Whereas the tacky glue tends to be a bit slower and I do like to use the tacky glue as a hardener. In this case, we used it as a glue and hardener on the beak at 100% um, so that we got a really strong bond, but the silicone glue is just perfect for the final seeding of this beak. Also, it has no odor, which I find a real plus. Let's insert our eyes, then we'll finish off by permanently attaching our wing and topping him off with a fun little tail. These glass eyes come on a rod. They're hand blown, so they're not always exactly the same on both sides. Just have fun with that, or you can also color and make your own. I like to cut the wire at a nice sharp angle so that it helps poke through the fiber. If you're not sure where you want to put your eyes, you can just use a little pin or any little thing as a guide to try and you know choose exactly where's the eye going to be or a little round pin. Um, and I wanna go right here with my little eye. So a little hole, and I generally tend to, to make the angle slightly to the back just to help avoid hitting the armature. And again, before you glue them into place, just make sure that you can easily poke them in to look like you want them to. And you might wanna even get both, both in place first. Once you know where you want them, then add the glue. We've chosen to use our sewn and turned wing for this little bird. If you would like to adorn your wing with a button or some other beading or additions, it would be much easier to do that before you attach the wing to the body. So consider that before you glue or stitch your wing onto your bird. One method you might use for attaching a sewn wing, especially if you're willing to show both sides, uh, is to sew it on. In this case, we start with an anchor stitch in the body, anchor the wing to the body by running along the curve of the wing, run your thread into the body, through the back of the wing fabric, and back out again. And just go as far as you need to to securely anchor the wing into the position that you would like. Instead of knotting the thread, we ran our needle back up and down through the body underneath the wing and then just cut off the end. To create a fun and whimsical tail for our little bird, we're going to use this sari silk ribbon. And I want his tail to be about this long. Going to just tie the ribbons together in a knot and then see if you like that look on your bird. I think it makes him look fun and whimsical so we're going to sew that into place onto his little tail. You start with your anchor stitch into the tail and then just run repeatedly through the ribbons that come right off the knot. Stitching through the knot is more difficult, so just stitch right at the base of the knot back and forth until you feel it's securely attached to the tail of your bird. The nice thing about stitching, whether your wings or your tail to the bird, is if you're not happy with the placement, all you have to do is cut the threads and put them back on. So consider stitching. You can be kind of messy about it because none of it really shows. To terminate your thread, run 
back and forth through the tail a number of times and you can place a few knots during those travels back and forth. Just pull the knot tightly and cut it as close to the body as possible. One of the things I just love about these waffle birds is the huge variety that you can create with all of your fibers, fabrics, bits, bobs, even scrap materials, and also just your imagination. Everyone's gonna make something different, so give yourself permission to have fun, play, explore, experiment, and make a truly one-of-a-kind waffa or wafita today. Oh, we hope you enjoyed today's project. These birds are so fun for me. And the last time we shared the large waffa birds, y'all made some amazing creations. So make sure to share yours in our Facebook group, Living Felt Friends. If you enjoyed this video and would like more tutorials on needle felting birds, check out this next video right here.